So, it's been a few days since the last video I posted. Um, I shot another one a couple of days ago uh, that I was going to uh, detail the assembly of the photo etched harnesses uh, for the seatbelts uh, for my P51. But that really kind of just turned into this whole comedy of errors as uh, I kept screwing it up because I'm not very proficient with photo etch. Um, so trying to do a demonstration video for a process I'm not really that familiar with, yeah, didn't really work out all that well, surprisingly enough. Um, I did get them done. Um, you can see here, this is the, uh, the shoulder belt. Um, it's fully assembled, each, uh, uh, and then there's the two lap belts, um, which are a bit smaller. Um, right there, they're both basically the same. Um, each of them is made of uh, uh, between three and five parts. Uh, not overly complicated, but um, I'm just a bit of a bonehead sometimes when it comes to uh, strategizing uh, a new process, you know, a new, uh, a new technique I've never used. Um, so, yeah, I kind of screwed up on the first attempt because um, each, uh, each of the belts... Um, has uh, each side of the belt has uh, like three little parts like there's the main belt itself and then like the, the adjustment harness uh, like the adjustment straps for the harness has uh, has two little parts that go with it and they have to go together in a very specific order um, and my giant sausage fingers weren't really helping matters uh, in putting them together um, so yeah the first time uh, the first one I tried I kinda screwed up and then I figured out how better to do it as I went on with the other, uh, the other two, or with the other belts. Um, and eventually I was able to get it to work, and it looks great now. Um, but uh, yeah, I felt like a bit of a tool for, uh, for trying to do that on camera when I had uh, very little practical experience with photo etch of that nature. Um, so yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that video will never see the light of day. Like I said, it was quite the comedy of errors. Um, in the meantime, though, the uh, cockpit is basically fully painted. Uh, the majority of it is assembled. You can see here's the instrument panel uh, with the shroud attached. It's not glued down yet, but uh, it is uh, in place just for, uh, for demonstration purposes. Um, you can also take a look. You might be able to see the instruments under the glass just a little bit. Uh, as well, the uh, the bezels have been uh, have been painted uh, flat aluminum uh, with a dry brushing technique. Um, I'm quite happy with uh, how the cockpit has gone together so far. I've also painted the uh, inside side walls of uh, the fuselage, um, and I've done a little, some detail painting and some weathering, and uh, I'm quite happy with how it looks so far. So I'm pretty close, I think, to being able to button this thing up. Um, I do still have to assemble the uh, ventral oil cooler radiator channel, um, which has some photo etch in it itself, but it's nothing that's going to be too difficult. So I still want to do a demonstration of how to do photo etching because I want to talk about uh, this thing. This is an etch mate. This is a photo etch bending tool. It's by a company called Mission Models. Um, and even though, like I said, my proficiency with photo etch isn't very high, this came in very handy when doing the uh, the seat belts, and um, likewise when working with uh, some of my other um, uh, other models that I've done. Uh, for example, my um, what was it? My I four hundred submarine, which had uh, not a huge amount of uh, of photo etch that uh, needed this, but um, there was some, and it was very helpful. Um, so if you're going to be doing much photo etching, I highly recommend you pick one up. Uh, but we'll talk more at greater length about, uh, about that tool um, in a future video. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about today is uh, I actually got myself a new camera. Um, I'm still using my same uh, Canon piece of crap that I've had for the last, God, three years, I think, as my primary camera. Um, but uh, I've got... A little portable, a little mini camera. Uh, this is a Contour Roam. I got it off of Amazon. Um, it's about $200. Uh, it's a really nice little camera. Um, it's basically 
the kind of thing that you would wear, like, if you wanted to do some filming while snowboarding or skiing or skydiving or bungee jumping or, um, or whatnot. But, um, like, it has a, a head strap you can get. You can mount it to all kinds of things. It's just a, a compact, wide-angle lens camera. Um, I plan to use it for paintball, not surprisingly. This is uh, one of my paintball guns. This is my Tipman X7. Um, you may remember it from the last time I showed it, uh, but I've made some modifications to it since then. I've uh, added a new foregrip uh, and a new shoulder stock and basically made it look like a, um, a Heckler & Koch uh, H&K MP5. Um, and I'm quite happy with, uh, with how it looks, but I've got a, a Picatinny rail mount for my camera on the top of it. So, as you can see right there. I can mount the camera on the rail and uh, play paintball and film from the perspective of the gun. Now I haven't played paintball for a couple of months. Uh, the weather just hasn't really been conducive and when I've had the time I haven't had the money. When I've had the money I haven't had the time. Um, but um, as long as I'm not working this weekend I absolutely will be going and I will be taking my new camera with me and I will be shooting a ton of footage. Um, so uh, you can uh, you can expect to see some of that probably in the in a few days, uh, which should be fun. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll hopefully get that uh, that shot and edited uh, by next week. Um, one other thing I wanted to bring up: um, ever since I started uh, making videos on YouTube, I've been using Windows Movie Maker because it's easy to use. You know, it's pretty much idiot-proof. Um, unfortunately, I've pretty much gone as far as that software can take me. Um, I, uh, yeah, it's just not really powerful enough to, uh, to do what I want to do, not to mention it's not compatible with this format of software, uh, the, with the format that this shoots in. This shoots in uh, QuickTime.mov format. Um, and I really don't want to have to convert my files every single time I want to sh uh, edit some video. Um, so I've been looking around uh, for a replacement piece of software. I've kind of settled on either um, Sony Vegas, uh, the basic edition, um, I can't remember the ver what exactly what it's called. It's like Sony Vegas Movie Studio, um, or uh, Adobe Premiere Elements. Um, I need to find out for sure though uh, if they both will accept both this format and the format of my regular camera, which shoots in .mod. Um, I'm pretty sure that. Um, I'm pretty sure that Adobe Premiere Elements does accept both, but I don't know for sure if um, if uh, Vegas does. From what I've heard, I don't think it. But I have used the uh, the full version of Vegas before, and as complicated as it was, it, I could tell that it's a very, very complex, very uh, very powerful uh, piece of software. But um, I, I really, like I said, I don't want to have to convert my files every time I shoot some footage with this thing. Um, so if anyone out there has any recommendations, um, I'd really appreciate it. Um, like I said, the file formats that I use are .mod and .mov. Um, so if anyone knows of any software that uh, is compatible with both of those that's powerful but easy to use. You know, I don't need anything that's, you know, that uh, Hollywood uses. You know, I don't need like a professional grade. I need just like a basic consumer grade piece of software. Um, something that's intuitive but advanced. Um, and my budget's about $100. $100, $125. Um, <laughs> From what I've seen, Adobe Premiere Elements is about 125, 130, depending on where you're shopping, um, and that's about my the upper limit of my budget. Um, so, like I said, if anybody has any advice, I'd really appreciate it. Um, so, beyond that, um, my buildup of my P51 has kind of stalled for the last little while. Um, I've been meaning to get back to it. Uh, it's 
but it's kind of been low on my list of priorities for the last couple of weeks, mostly because of um, uh, a little video game called Mass Effect 3, which has kind of been using up all of my spare time. Um, I'm not usually one for multiplayer, but the MP in ME3 is just freaking awesome. And um, I got a couple of buddies that uh, I play online with, uh, and we coordinate over Skype, and uh, we're able to just kick some ass. It's just so much fun. Um, but, uh, you know, as with all things, my enthusiasm over that will wane over time, and I will get back to my P51. I have done a little bit of not as much as I'd like. Um, so... Uh, I'm going to try and get at least the harnesses painted and get the oil uh, cooler channel uh, assembled so that I can button up the fuselage uh, by the end of the weekend, um, Monday at the latest, depending on if I am or how much I am working. Um, so that being said, um, thanks everyone out there for watching. Uh, like I said, if you have any advice uh, for uh, editing software, just send me a, either a an instant message on uh, on YouTube or a comment. Um, I'd really appreciate the information. Um, so anyway, like I said, thanks everyone out there for watching and uh, happy modeling.